Hello Internet, Adopted Mike here, and in this video we're going to take a look at the uh, this Gemin 2 M4 here from Cooler Master. I've done a review of a similar product in the past, but this is their lower profile edition here. So we've got a, a low profile 59 millimeters or 2.3 inches. Here's the sockets it supports. Take a look at some of the specifications on the side here. So it's also utilizing a low profile fan as well too. So let's take a look at what's inside the box. Inside the box we get the installation manual here. We get all of the mounting hardware and even some thermal paste in there as well too. And then we get some uh, LGA 2011 mounting hardware in here as well. And we got some decent foam going on. So here is a look at the cooler itself. It's uh, pretty lightweight. We see we have four copper heat pipes going through and then this aluminum fitter, fin array with the low profile fan on top. Now I understand that uh, that fan can be swapped out for a higher profile and you can see here yes for sure it's only connecting by the uh, the bottom uh, portion of the fan so yeah you could have as thick of a fan as you wanted on here but obviously keeping it for uh, as low profile as possible was the idea here. So anyway let's go through a quick installation and we'll take a look at what it looks like. Real quickly though this is a uh, 120 millimeter fan there. So for the installation I'm actually going to be upgrading this mini ITX board uh, the stock uh, AMD cooler there and uh, this is going in a very small PC so we're gonna do a quick before and after look as well too so this is the stock that comes with a quad core APU and uh, let's zoom in and we'll get a measurement so we can see here our baseline starting point from the actual bottom or the uh, the motherboard PCB there as we work our way up we're looking here we have uh, about two and a quarter inch to the top of the fan on the stock heatsink. So now that's our good reference point. So let's go back to the installation and see how uh, this other one stacks up. All right, so we've got the stock heatsink removed, and now it's time to pull these pins, and then we'll get the uh, stock hold down removed as well. Now we'll select the appropriate hardware. Um, so basically what can be done here is we can install these here for the AMD socket or we can install like this one here we can catch here and here now what this is going to allow us to do is we will be able to choose if we want to mount the cooler see if I can yeah we'll be able to mount the cooler this way which will actually will allow it to clear the RAM let me see if I can jump up a little bit here make it a little easier okay there we go so we can install the cooler this way or this way which it won't clear the RAM in this particular case so obviously I'm going to have to make sure that I get the appropriate hardware to install it this way and let me show a different view here there we go that's probably better so we have the op option to go this way with it which as you can see it is going to clear the RAM just barely but it does or if we go the other way then uh, yeah, boom it's not going to so I'll select the appropriate hardware to install it this way alright so I've got the heat sink standoffs coming through and then we go for the back plate and that's where I noticed that we're gonna have an issue um, I kinda thought this would come up but this is the ASRock A85X ITX board um, which has a couple of chips on the underside which do not allow the back plate to properly install and I had a feeling I would run into it with this this chip here uh, won't allow this part to come down and then uh, and then there's chips right up underneath this area here so 
those there. So unfortunately, this particular back plate uh, or cooler will not work. Um, I have made it work with other coolers, uh, but definitely this motherboard is not compatible. So what I'm going to do from here then is I'm actually going to switch over to a another um, ITX board. I'll go with a Gigabyte and we'll try that installation on the board. Alright, so let's try out the Gigabyte board here. Um, so yeah, basically we're going to go right back like we had before with the cooler mounted this way and yeah this particular time we're gonna have no issues getting the back plate mounted um, yeah so anyway I will continue on I need to clean off the uh, surfaces and then I'll continue on with the the mounting so here's what we ended up with it's installed now to take a look it uh, almost it's the RAM almost I mean it is it is right up there I know it doesn't I mean the, the heat sink wiggles a little bit so it's not actually hitting the RAM but it's uh, right up against these rip jaws and then over here we can see we'll take a height measurement here shortly one thing to point out though on this particular motherboard let's just take a look at the bottom there um, it's actually killing my use of the PCI Express slot as you can see here um, which is kind of unfortunate uh, either um, the CPU socket is too close to the PCI Express bracket which is actually what I think is going on in this particular case uh, as we saw before it could be flipped the other way it is um, it probably still wouldn't even fit if it were flipped the other way. First of all, it would hit the RAM. Second of all, I just think what we have going on here is a PCI Express bracket that is too close to the CPU. As you can see up top here, we have an, a ton more room this way, just nothing this way. So one thing to think about, um, I mean, we can see in this motherboard, the ASRock that I was working on before, um, you can tell really easily right here that the CPU socket on this board is up higher um, than this. The CPU obviously is directly in the center of this Cooler Master logo. So if you look here, that automatically is an inch or two higher. That would definitely make the difference because we have the VRMs here where on the Gigabyte board they're here. So um, it pushed the VRMs end up pushing the processor back a little ways. Plus we have the RAM up top on the ASRock and the RAM over off to the side. So on ITX boards, since there really isn't a, a standard per se, um, this cooler I would probably not recommend it for an ITX board unless you really watched what was going on here. Because, I mean, first of all, in the ASRock it wouldn't fit because of the chips on the back. Well, in this one, I lose uh, the PCI Express by 16 slot, which is okay for the particular use that I'm doing with this. Is I'm only using the APU and I do not need that. Uh, if I ever did need the PCI Express bracket, I could easily just uh, downgrade uh, to the older um, heatsink that came off of there. So anyway, now let's take a look. We remember we had two and one quarter inch uh, height on the previous cooler. Now let's see, going down to the motherboard, we have, uh, looks to be just shy of two and three quarters. So we have about a half of an inch increase in height. And, I mean, most certainly, if you take a look at this, I mean, you can see here we have a huge increase in uh, the width and the there. So, I mean, we're looking at just under, um, well, yeah, we've got two and three quarter inches there by two and three quarter inches. And, obviously, we're going, you know, almost uh, four and three quarter inches both ways. So, we got a just an awesome uh, addition of... Um, surface area so that's cool there too but yeah just definitely on the ITX boards uh, you might look elsewhere for this particular cooler other than that um, I think it's going to perform great in a case uh, so yeah we'll take a look um, at getting it in a case and I'll come back with some uh, some temperatures 
Okay, so I'm back. I um, did some off-camera testing anyway, and I wasn't super impressed. Um, it is very quiet. I will give it that. Um, but, you know, I, I was getting about 8 degrees cooler at full load than the uh, the stock CPU cooler, which is, which is good, um, I think. But not is what I was expecting for the uh, the price that I paid. I paid uh, I paid about forty dollars for this uh, cooler here. I did so for the price. I guess you know I was expecting um, a little better. Now, I mean honestly though, it does help cool a little bit more around the area of the motherboard down there, um, and perhaps when the thermal compound. Um, breaks in if you will a little bit we might get a little better temperatures um, and and to be fair as well I mean a low profile fan that is not really spinning at a very high RPM um, it really didn't feel like it was moving a lot of air either so I think that probably has a lot to do with it so overall um, on an ITX board I would say definitely not um, unless, like we talked about before, I mean, if you don't need the PCI Express on this particular one, or if it's another mini ITX board with the uh, the sockets placed a little further away, then it might not be so bad. You know, micro ATX or ATX, I think this is a uh, a pretty good deal. But I still think I would recommend the um, I think it's the the S524. Uh, that's the actual, the taller one. Uh, I did like that one much better in uh, my testing and and, and uh, working with. So anyway, um, that is my thoughts on this. Not bad, but certainly not great. I would say it's just, uh, it's just good. So anyway, that wraps up the unboxing and quick look at the Cooler Master Gemin 2 M4 low-profile CPU cooler, and as always, thank you for watching.